means the people we elect to run the government needs to be the ones who actually run the government, not the shadow government in the deep state that runs the show today. If you want to seal the border, vote Trump. If you want to restore law and order in this country, vote Trump. If you want to defeat the deep state, vote Trump. Is America truly governed by its elected leaders, or is there a hidden power pulling the strings? Trump's bold claims about the deep state have reignited this age-old debate. In the dimly lit rooms of Georgetown, decisions that would shape the course of nations were made, far from the public eye and democratic scrutiny. Power agents, unseen and unelected, manipulated the levers of power in ways the founders of the United States never intended. This is the story of the Deep State, a shadowy network that has exerted its influence from the Cold War to the present day. During times of war, nations mobilize all resources, including intelligence agencies, to safeguard their interests. However, the transition from wartime to peacetime often leaves behind a legacy of espionage and covert operations that don't easily fit back into the box. The United States saw this firsthand during World War II with the establishment of the Office of Strategic Services, OSS, led by Wild Bill Donovan. This was America's first foray into organized, centralized intelligence. Donovan, a Wall Street lawyer with a penchant for espionage, was convinced of the necessity for a wartime intelligence service. His brainchild, the OSS, was tasked with a myriad of covert operations, from psychological warfare to paramilitary missions. The OSS became a hub for unconventional warfare, engaging in operations like strapping explosives to bats for use in Tokyo and recruiting top-tier talent from American high society, earning the moniker Oh So Social. The end of Tabuchiryu brought the dissolution of the OSS as President Truman feared the rise of an American Gestapo. However, the genie was already out of the bottle. The Cold War's onset saw the resurrection of centralized intelligence in the form of the CIA, driven by the growing rivalry with the Soviet Union. The immediate post-war period saw initiatives like Operation Paperclip, where former Nazi scientists were recruited to bolster America's scientific and military prowess. This was just the beginning. The CIA soon became an instrument of U.S. foreign policy, engaging in covert operations to influence global politics. From meddling in Italian elections to orchestrating coups in Iran and Guatemala, the agency wielded its power to protect and expand American interests. Under the leadership of Alan Dulles, the CIA undertook some of its most audacious operations. Dulles, who had a significant influence on American foreign policy, directed operations that often put corporate interests ahead of democratic principles. The agency's actions were not confined to distant lands. Domestically, it conducted surveillance and mind control experiments, pushing the boundaries of legality and morality. A community of power. Georgetown, an upscale neighborhood in Washington, D.C., became the epicenter of the real power in America. Key figures in the intelligence community, high-ranking officials and influential journalists lived in close proximity, often meeting in informal settings to make decisions that would have global repercussions. This concentration of power away from the public eye and official channels highlighted the growing influence of what would come to be known as the Deep State. The Cuban Missile Crisis was a pivotal moment in the Cold War, where President Kennedy's decision to attend a cocktail party in Georgetown, rather than staying in the White House, epitomized the influence of this elite circle. The advice and opinions of those in Georgetown, many of whom were unelected, played a critical role in shaping the response to one of the most dangerous moments in world history. Exposure of Covert Activities By the 1970s, the unchecked power of the intelligence community began to draw public scrutiny. The Church Committee, led by Senator Frank Church, revealed the extent of the CIA's covert operations, 
including assassination plots, domestic spying, and manipulation of the press. The hearings exposed the agency's overreach and led to a national outcry for accountability and oversight. The revelations of the Church Committee resulted in significant reforms. New oversight mechanisms were established to monitor intelligence activities aiming to prevent future abuses of power. However, the deep-seated influence of the intelligence community proved resilient, and many of those exposed during the hearings continued to wield significant power behind the scenes. The 9-11 attacks brought a renewed emphasis on national security, leading to the passage of the Patriot Act and the expansion of intelligence operations. This period saw the resurgence of surveillance and covert activities reminiscent of the early Cold War era. The intelligence community once again gained broad powers to act in the name of national security, often with minimal oversight. Figures like Edward Snowden brought attention to the extent of domestic surveillance programs, revealing that the intelligence community was once again operating in ways that threatened civil liberties. These revelations sparked a national debate about the balance between security and privacy and the role of the deep state in modern governance. The story of the deep state is one of power and secrecy, of unelected officials wielding immense influence over the direction of the nation. While these entities have undoubtedly played crucial roles in protecting national security, their actions have also raised profound questions about accountability and democracy. As we navigate the complexities of the modern world, the challenge remains to balance the need for security with the fundamental principles of transparency and democratic oversight. The deep state's shadow continues to loom large, reminding us of the ever-present tension between freedom and control. <laughs>